Most people in America are familiar with hot topics in the news, controversial issues that are affecting politicians in theory, because we often ask them to answer questions about those topics, which might not necessarily be a part of moral society in the day-to-day -day aspects of someone's human living. What I can tell you about is that I have been a researcher in a particular hot topic that is sort of making the news, it's sort of making interviews with Oprah, and openly it's sort of obnoxious to me. But what I can say to you is what I don't like is how people are dehumanizing people, sexualizing people, and inappropriately thinking about and talking about their genitalia. What I'm going to say to people is that God is a moral God, and Jesus Christ did not die for you to take someone's ideology and place it on their biology and say that they are not in a proper life. Whatever the fuck you think you're doing, when you do that, is inappropriate. What Jesus said is we cover ourselves for modesty. And when we do that, no one has the right to uncover you without your consent and your permission. That we know is called rape or promiscuous, promiscuous sex is not at all what it's called. Here we have a community and a society that brings in people from diversity, meaning they come in from different nations and cultures around the world. Different nations and cultures may not have the same concept of propriety, and that's something I recognized in Japan. Japan and Japanese people are not as anal attentive about the human nakedness of a body, but at the same time they're not worried about sexuality. They expect that people need to do that for the healthiness of their heart, mind, and soul, and just the exercise of it in terms of their spiritual health. But what I can say to you is that there are other nations that are highly abusive of that concept and that they are not conducive to American life. When I say that, I'm of course talking about human trafficking and the types of people that are known to do that. We know that men and women of many different races, particularly from the Middle East, participate in that. And we have to be very careful of that for our children. We also do not have the right to have a police force or sheriff force that have rights to your medical records or rights to photograph you naked. And this is a real problem in Midwest America that people are totally avoiding federal law to produce for themselves the opportunities of malfeasance and malpractice because no police officer is ever really a medical doctor. I realize that in some buttfuck area of Alaska that might be the case because they don't have a lot of medicine men around there, but that's not my point. My point is that generally speaking in America, we have the right to the privacy, our genitalia, and therefore when they start talking about sexuality, I get really pissed off. Because a person's sexuality has nothing to do with their day-to-day -day life. Unless, of course, there are people who are literally doing that in the sex trade, and no offense, but I'm not, and most of America is not. We do have a major problem with pornography because we have done uh, the religious right an incredible disservice. And religious rights are not actually helping their own uh, faith and Christianity because a lot of those men are addicted to porn. Scary thought. In life, we, it means that women, the demoralization of women has not gone away yet. In the moments of time when you have an intimate partner, you're not usually flaunting that or doing that in front of people. You might hold somebody's hand, you might take their arm, you might put your arm around them at a restaurant, you might hold hands under the table, you might even be a little frisky without people paying attention, but the reality is, generally speaking, we don't sit there and mac and make out in front of people. We might do it in a vehicle, and I have had that experience where I was parked in a parking lot, someone pulled in and started making out with his oriental girlfriend, I said, okay, it's time for me to go. And I realized that I somehow had lost my space and time with that, and I'm thinking, there's a huge parking lot, go find another space. But they were pulling into a wall, I guess, to give themselves a little frontage blockage, but I was sort of offended by that. But I also understand that couples want to have a little bit of, of cre creative and secret time, so I can be amenable to that. At the same time, I recognize that there are people who are peeping times who would sit there and just watch that, and I'm not one of them. I don't have a need to do that. I don't feel it's moral, and I don't feel it's immoral that they were doing that. I just kind of wish they'd moved over a little bit more so I wouldn't have ever noticed that. Because people sit talking in a car all the time. And openly they meet in parking lots to just do that because they don't have time to go places or they don't feel like going places or they don't feel like spending the money. And that's okay during a time of COVID. Now in life we have to be very honest and careful about what we talk about in terms of sexuality and in terms of our genitalia because it is totally off charts and moral to be talking about it in the public sector and I really truly believe that. In life we have to really pay attention to the fact that we people are people. And people being people mean that they have to function in that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a general practice, not in a total practice of a human's uh, body parts. Meaning we have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to 
uh, defecate, we have to have sex because that is a part of our, our personal human makeup, and we have to self-actualize. So having said that, I'm saying that we can understand the concept of why it might be talked about in pub public areas, and particularly politicians, politicians love to bring it up, and what's their stance on this and what's their stance on that. But the reality is, in general, in the day-to-day -day aspect of American citizens' lives, that part of a human being's life, that part within a family is usually considered private. Parents go into their bedrooms, they shut the door, they lock the door, they do it in the middle of the night when their kids aren't around, or they do it when the kids are at school. And I'm just not being profound, I'm saying honestly, this is immoral, that we should not be talking about it at all. At the same time, we should not be sexualizing people's body, but we know that both men and women do that. They get curious, they want to know, and the answer is, in some situations, you might have the right to know if you were invited into the conversation of intimate objects or intimacy in general or sexuality in general or sex topics at all or sex in humor but the bottom line is you probably have a really good relationship with that person and you probably have a really intimate type of conversation with that person but in general speaking in the public sector and people that are just strange brand new strangers to us we don't talk about this we also don't usually talk about politics or religion but that's not the point we still have those topics we can go to if they're interest to us and those things do function in the political in the political and public marketplace and we have the right to go and choose that but what i think there's an abuse going on is that people who don't like a particular sexuality might go off and harm someone that has a different type of sexuality than that what i also think and i also know from uh, knowledge of people is that there are people that want to really harm people who have a different lifestyle and i really i'm upset with that because we definitely have the words in our Bible and the words in our Constitution of thou shalt not kill. And that Second Amendment does not authorize you the right to kill anyone. What it does authorize you the right to do is to basically to evade any type of situation and to defend yourself and your family in any type of situation that is out of motherfucking control. Now by saying that, I'm expecting people to get that just because someone comes onto your property doesn't mean you get to shoot them. I'm also expecting people to realize that just because you don't like somebody's sexuality or the way that they manage their fashion and their haircut and all this sort of stuff, you don't have the right to do that for them. Nobody died and made you somebody's fashion diva or fashion goddess or fashion consultant, and nobody else died and made you their groomer. And openly, you don't have the right to do that behind their backs, meaning that you do it while they're sleeping. That is incredibly immoral, and it pisses God off to no end because it basically says, I don't care if you're a boy or a woman, do what the fuck I want to you. And that we cannot have. That is a form of human trafficking. That is most definitely a sexual assault because it's against secondary sex characteristics or how a person uh, wears their clothes or chooses their dresses. And openly, you do not have the right to do that. We also have manufacturing laws that protect the sanctity of a clothing garment or what it's supposed to look like. So you don't have the right to modify it to try to force a person to fit in what you feel is clothes that are tight. And when they buy something that's over and big for them, they do that for their own psycho-emotional comfort, not for you. So let's be really clear on that. That is a form of sexual assault when people do that. And people immorally do that to people and to, to make them exposed. They also do that to take away the right to wear clothing, which is offensive because it's really hard for people, especially who are homeless or impoverished, to buy clothes today because of the costs that are not sky high. It's just they have to prioritize. And their priority isn't always on buying new clothes when they just bought clothes and now you've ruined them. Now, when we're facing God in heaven, we have to ask ourselves, what's he going to say to us? When we stand in front of Lord Jesus, which is what, who most of you believe in, in some sort of concept with God, and say, well, God, this is what I did with my life. How am I? Am I moral? Am I moral? Am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? And I'm not making fun of this, and I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, but I really wonder about some of these people that do this, that they're not really considering what could happen to them in this current lifetime or in the next.